Sales tax and QuickBooks Online, how to manage. The quick answers are first to go to taxes and then add or edit tax rates and agencies or edit sales tax settings where you can uh, edit what you've already entered. And that's like I said, in taxes and then the add edit tax rates and agencies, click new to add a new sales tax rate or if you want to enter what you've, sorry, edit what you've previously entered, click on edit sales tax settings. If you want to view reporting on your sales tax liability, you go to taxes again, view sales tax liability report. That is here. Here you can specify the reporting period or put in custom dates and you can select which tax agency you want to see reporting on. Just uh, change those settings, hit run report. And uh, finally, the other sales tax setting you might want to edit is uh, the sales tax category for products and services. To do that, you go to sales, products and services. And when you get here, you'll see a listing of your products and services. Just click the one you want to edit click edit under the action column and towards the bottom of the product service information screen you should see sales tax category okay so that's the quick answers now we'll get into a little more detail about all of that so uh, before I get into it I want to um, start off with a caveat. Uh, recently, QuickBooks Online's made some changes to the uh, user experience, and I'm getting conflicting information between what I see in the sample company, which is what I use for my examples. Obviously, I use that for purposes of privacy. So I'm seeing a difference between that and what uh, I'm seeing elsewhere. So uh, what I chose to do in order to get this video out, <clears throat> not sit on it forever, is to basically cover both ways. So I guess uh, whatever QuickBooks has got going on in terms of that u new user interface, if it's affecting you yet, then you should still be able to use this video. If it's not, you should also still be able to use this video. So with all that said, we'll get into it here. Um, <clears throat> and capabilities of QuickBooks Online. It's supposed to have a sales tax engine that makes calculations that basically kind of a wizard for figuring out sales tax. Uh, what it does do though, once you enter information, it automatically calculates every time that you enter an invoice or a sales receipt. Okay, so it's uh, based on uh, the location of the sale and the type of product and uh, basically everything you enter during setup. Uh, there's supposed to be a sales tax center where you can view upcoming tax payments, see liability reports, change uh, settings and all that. You can, uh, as I covered in the quick answer, still do most of that. But uh, again, things have changed somewhat. So I can't walk you through an example of the old uh, basic setup or any of the old examples because, again, the sample company has changed, is different than the way it used to be. But Here's how the old way you used to do basic setup. And you go to that left menu, taxes, and then set up sales tax. There would be a button there. You would confirm your address, your place of business, and it would ask you uh, if you needed to collect sales tax outside of uh, where your address was. And uh, you'd click uh, typically no there and close the window then uh, you would also select your filing frequency and uh, you'd be given guidance on that uh, based on your locality and the anticipated amount of receipts you had how often you should file unfortunately it seems for the time being all that's gone you're um, now left to kind of sort it uh, figure it all out yourself uh, i would Assume that's a functionality that they'll bring back, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, things are a little weird now as of the recording of this video. 
So the new way though, you go to um, still go to taxes on the left menu. Then, like I said, add edit tax rates and agencies. Let that load up and your first time you're probably going to, when you're setting it up, you're going to want to click new and you're going to choose whether you do a uh, single or combined tax rate. And if you're not familiar, a, a single tax rate is pretty straightforward. Um, that would be like a state sales tax. Now, obviously, uh, sometimes counties and or cities or, um, you know, other, uh, other governments <clears throat> will implement an additional sales tax, uh, you know, to pay for schools, to pay for uh, new arenas, to pay for whatever it is. So when they do that, when you, when you start stacking sales tax rates, that's when you've got a combined rate. Okay. Uh, what I would suggest doing until they get their little wizard back up and running, if they do, is to uh, go to this address right here, uh, salestaxstates.com. And that's an easy way to look up what the sales tax rate is in a specific area. Uh, but I would definitely double check that against the, the appropriate state department of revenue website, just to confirm it. So once you have it entered, if you want to edit, um, I mentioned go to edit sales tax settings here. And uh, this isn't editing the sales tax for one of the uh, government entities that you entered earlier. This is more general settings. You know, as you can see, do you charge sales tax where your default sales tax is and uh, whether you want to make all new customers taxable or and or all new products and services taxable. So those are more general settings, not the uh, specific settings. Those would be edited here, of course, where you would click on the relevant uh, government entity and click edit. And there you can change the rate. Oops, what did you do there? I don't know what happened. back on track here. Uh, a little bit more about those general uh, options that you can edit. You know, it asks, do you charge sales tax if you sell physical goods? Typically, the answer is going to be yes. Um, Again, the old, with the old way, it used to walk you through where you could uh, kind of, I don't know, it gave you more guidance on what was taxable and how much based off of your locality and everything. It, it just doesn't seem to do that now. But uh, so typically the answer is going to be yes, but it's a complicated topic. So make sure you do your research. Uh, you pick a default sales tax. That's a drop down, like I showed you from previously entered agencies, and then um, make all new customer product services taxable. Depends on the nature of your business, but I would imagine that would typically be uh, checked also. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit more about tax categories for products and services. Again, that's sales, products, and services. Then you want to edit for a specific product or service. Um, so the sales tax category, like I said, it's a drop down. You can choose either a taxable standard rate, non-taxable, or choose a special category. If you're unsure, you might take a look at special categories to make sure this particular product or service doesn't fall under one of those. Let's take a look at that here. And this is what I was talking about, how it'll kind of walk you through 
a little bit as far as different products and services are concerned. So uh, if you were in um, the business of professional services, you know, you might click that, look and see, it'll narrow it down. And if uh, your services, say your photographer, uh, fall under uh, this category, you know, again, you keep narrowing it down and check the button, click the button and uh, hit done and uh, it'll apply the appropriate sales tax given uh, your uh, locality, like I said, and that particular product or service. If you can't find that particular uh, product or service in that special category list, then just go ahead and click taxable standard rate, unless you're certain it's non-taxable. <clears throat> I used to be able to check the uh, sales tax calculation by looking at sales receipt and invoices. Uh, again, as far as I can tell, that's no longer an option. Like if we go to all sales here, sales, all sales, select receipt or invoice, click on the sales tax link. It used to be where sales tax was calculated. Um, you know, it was a, a clickable kind of hyperlink in the bottom right. And then you could view or edit the sales tax calculation from there. Now, if we look at, um, for instance, an open invoice, Uh, it depends in part what's on the invoice of course if it's all non-taxable services then yeah something's not quite right no kidding let's see if we can click on another one here okay This one doesn't have sales tax. That was a payment though. We try one more invoice. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So anyhow, like I said, it used to, uh, obviously the functionality has gotten a lot worse. Uh, yeah. That's the way it used to work. It could be that they bring that functionality back, but uh, for the time being, as far as I can tell, it's gone. Uh, the sales tax center, the old way, again, uh, in the left menu, uh, you go to taxes and then sales tax. Uh, in some instances, if uh, you do payroll, you might see uh, payroll taxes as a a tab or a, a sub option there, but um, in this case, the sample company isn't set up that way. And uh, if it were, I'm not sure if it would be there. The way uh, the way things have gone with these changes. Uh, anyhow, it uh, there were a bunch of uh, I call them cards or whatever across the screen there where. You know, they were kind of graphical and uh, easy to navigate, like sales tax due was there. Tax breakdown, it showed you that, uh, you know, where you, so you keep an eye on what the sales tax due, um, what you had accrued to be owing all the uh, agencies in terms, of set, in terms of sales tax. And tax breakdown, uh, which was kind of in the main area of the screen, it had sales tax amounts, uh, what was due this month, what was upcoming, what was overdue, a lot of great information. Um, then you had the opportunity to view your return, which was, again, based on what had already been entered in the QuickBooks Online uh, when it was time to pay. Typically, that was done on the state, uh, state's website where you would file that return, but, uh, you know, it was uh, all prepared for you. 
And it would also then record the payment to QuickBooks Online when you click the record payment button. Uh, finally, there's history in the sales tax settings. Sales tax settings uh, that they do still have where you can view, edit, and enter agencies. Um, history, that's that the comparable thing now is the, um, the sales tax liability report. And you could view pure previously uh, paid or filed returns. So the old sales tax center had a lot of great information. Now, uh, not as much. I mean, uh, there's some, sh does show what you owe here on the main screen, uh, depending on, it breaks it down by uh, agency and that, but uh, it seemed to me a lot more user-friendly previously. Uh, there were also the reports in the upper right, the sales tax liability report, which still has, and uh, taxable customer report, which uh, might exist in reports now. I feel like it does. Uh, let's take a look here. And uh, there were also shortcuts in the sales tax center on the right side that uh, navigate to all the areas that fed into the sales tax calculation. So you could jump straight to them from there, which was... Also handy. Now you basically got, um, like I mentioned, the sales tax owed. That's the main screen in the sales tax center and the sales tax liability report. Kind of your two options. It's still loading. Uh, talked a little bit about the sales tax liability report earlier. You select the appropriate report period and tax agency and then uh, click the run report button. Still loading. So uh, that basically covers everything. Uh, look, I know that was kind of a, a not the best video ever. I would love to give you more uh, up-to-date information, but like I said, it seems like it's in kind of in flux for the time being. So that is what it is. And uh, I can always record a new video if I have to in the future. But uh, so I don't know if you run into similar circumstances that I did. You saw me struggling here. Everything's changed where it's located. Frankly, it's not as uh, not as robust as it used to be, um, you know, and uh, it can be a pain in the butt to deal with. So you know, you've got a business to run, you've got sales that need to be made. And if you don't have time to DIY uh, your bookkeeping, you should check out Botkeeper. What it is, is a, in essence, it's a AI based bookkeeping, but with a human element to, to, to kind of qualify things, you might say. Uh, so a lot of the tasks that you hate to do are automated. And uh, again, you can work more on your business. You can work on bringing in more sales and worry less about data entry and worry less about slow internet connections and fumbling around uh, with the backwards changes they've made to QuickBooks. So uh, there's a link for that down in the description if you want to check that out. And uh, that's all there is. So, you know, I still tried to make, even though things were a little wacky, tried to make this video quick and to the point up front to get your answers. And then uh, if you wanted to, get into more detail. You know, I tried to do that too, tried to give you as much information as possible, give you the slides to reference. And uh, if that worked for you, I would appreciate a like. And uh, if you find yourself looking up uh, topics on QuickBooks Online fairly frequently and uh, want to skip the search bar in the future and uh, just check out uh, my channel, I have posted and will continue to post more videos. So, uh, if you subscribe, you can do that. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take care.